I am Mike, and today we're going to be talking about the first book in Peter V. Brett's The Demon Cycle, uh, The Painted Man, later changed to The Warded Man. I'll get into that later. Uh, if this is your first time finding the channel, I do want to let you know that all of my book reviews are spoiler heavy. I do Let's Discuss segments. Those are spoiler free, but all of my book reviews will be going over key points in the plot. So if you have not read The Painted Man, bookmark this video and please come back after you do. With that said, let's get into it. Lots to talk about here. Uh, the Demon Cycle is a series that I have had on my iPad for close to about five years now. Uh, a friend of mine recommended it to me uh, years ago. And uh, if you've watched any of my videos on the channel here, you know that uh, I am open to most recommendations when it comes to all types of fantasy, as long as it isn't what I call YA garbage. Uh, I've said about the YA movement is that uh, there's a time and place for them, and, and, and I understand if people are really into that. That's, that's awesome. I'm never going to get onto someone for reading, no matter what it is. Uh, just with fantasy, I find YA absolutely unreadable. That's just a personal thing, so please don't take that any other way. Uh, but the thing is, when I first saw the covers for these books on the Demon Cycle, I was kind of sold. Uh, it, it looked like what Brent Weeks tried to do with the Night Angel books, you know, but but Brent went to Walmart instead of using a professional photographer, uh, like Peter B. Brett did. Here. Peter V. Brett did here. Uh, each just has you know a character in a really awesome looking costume and an epic war pose with the author's signature above the title. It just it, I usually say don't judge a book by its cover, but uh, you know I was guilty of it this time. Uh, I mean, long story short, the, the the covers are very slick. I like them, but uh, I've had them on my iPad for years. I just started collecting them on hardcover after I finished this book because you know I didn't know if I wanted to collect the series on hardcover until I liked it. But spoiler alert, jumping ahead here, I really like this book, so uh, I've started collecting them all. I've got them all except book two on hardcover now. But uh, this was um, you know about the time where I first started saying and I was. About five years ago, I'm sorry, my kids are screaming right now, and I'm trying to understand what they're screaming about. Uh, first five years ago, I think, I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to read these, and I just kept putting it off, kept putting it off. And, I mean, as time passed, I was like, yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then I was like, well, the series ain't done yet. I'll wait for it to finish. And, I mean, that happened in 2017. And I said, okay, I can start it now. You know, this was around the time I started talking to you authors on Twitter and seeing which ones would actually, you know, talk about because I'm sure their mentions were crazy. But uh, I talked to Peter V. Brown on Twitter. Very, very nice dude. Super nice guy. He uh, he pretty much interacts with just about anyone who isn't a dick to him. And if you use Twitter at all, you know there's there's more of those than not. I'd say Mark Lawrence uh, from Broken Empire. He's about the only author on Twitter I've seen that interacts with his readers more. But you know, after about two years of telling him, "Hey, yeah, I'm about to start your series," and he'd be like, "Thanks, man, it's awesome." Uh, I finally decided. I finally decided it was time to. Uh, because I'm on what I call my Wheel of Time sabbatical, and I'm reading several new series at once during that break. And the good news is, waiting five years, it was it was worth the wait because I literally read this book in two days. It's every bit the page turner as I was told it would be. And so, I mean, let's talk about the big plot points here. Uh, there's three main POV characters in this, so I'll talk about each one up until that point. Because I try to go just like in chronological order, it's going to be all over the place. So, uh, like I did with my uh, with my first law reviews, we're going to talk about each character, and uh, you know, up to the point where they meet up. Uh, it starts as just about every fantasy tale you can think of does with a young boy in a village, but you know, that's about the only similarity because this is in the aftermath of an attack by demons. It's revealed that these demons, you know, they only they come every single night and they disappear as soon as the sun rises. And, you know, their only defense, human's defense against these creatures, which just will absolutely brutalize them. You know, it does, they don't stop the talk at all. They just completely brutalize humans. But the, they, they've created these complex wards that they paint on their homes. And uh, these wards, you know, they damage a demon if they touch them. That's really their only defense against them. You know, but even the smallest imperfection in one of these wards can, uh, can cause them to fail. The demons can get through. Uh, so after after a short time, uh, the young boy Arlen uh, is his name, and, and his mother end up outside when the demons hit, and his mother is absolutely just, you know, close to death by one of these, and he saves her with a with a with a bucket or a shovel, I don't recall, but uh, she's on her deathbed and needs healing uh, healing from a from a demon fever as they call it. But the sticking point here is with Arlen is that his dad had always said, hey, you know, if uh, if you or your mom were ever in trouble, you know, I'd be the first one out there. But his dad just, like, freezes on the porch. He does not leave the protection of the warded house to save his wife. And this is something that sticks with Arlen 
through the whole book, uh, understandably. Uh, and, you know, I might have the ages wrong. I think he's nine years old when this starts. You know, but his, his mom eventually passes away because she can't get the healing necessary. And this leads to a big fight between Arlen and his father. And he runs away in the forest, uh, you know, after their fight, not considering, oh, shit, you know what? I'm not going to be able to find shelter before dark hits. And this is where he first starts to figure out that he has a remarkable ability to draw these wards in the dirt. And he lives through the night. And this is the beginning of him deciding that he wants to be what is known as a messenger. Uh, if I had to sum up what these are, I'd say it's kind of like a warrior mailman. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but it's actually really cool. Uh, he's taken under the wing of a messenger that used to come to his village, a man by the name of Reagan. Uh, he sends him to a teacher whose name I didn't write down. Sorry. Uh, but this teacher is also a former messenger that retired, and he tells him his training is going to take about seven years to complete. And by the time his training is almost done, you know, he leaves for reasons. Um, this video would get really long if I got really, really detailed on it. Uh, but on the way, you know, he's a teenager now. On the way, he finds this, this spear in some ruins uh, that has uh, wards on it. And these wards actually allow him to kill a demon. And so he makes his way to the city of Krasia. And he earns the trust of their leader, Amon Jardir. Uh, over time... I'm really, really summarizing here because I don't want to get just, I don't want this to be a 45 minute video. Uh, over time, you know, he, he earns a trust of this leader, you know, fights with them and stuff like that, but he's eventually betrayed by Jardir. And this is a move that shouldn't have surprised me. I mean, really? But it, it actually did. I actually was surprised how it happened. You know, he, he takes the spear and throws him in a pit with all these demons, and Arlen still finds a way to live through it, climbs his way out, but, uh, you know, he's. He has Arlen apprehended and thrown out in the middle of the desert to die. And that's the last we see of Arlen for a while. Uh, Leisha, uh, the next POV character, the only female POV we have in the story, uh, and a really good arc in my opinion. I'll get into the, uh, the criticisms of it. Uh, but she sees her town ravaged by demons the same way as Arlen, and, and it leads to her helping out the town healer, Bruna. And eventually, she becomes Bruna's apprentice. You know, over the years, she becomes so good at what she's doing that she actually starts to exceed Bruna in some ways and starts taking on the, the, the brunt of the responsibilities to a point where, you know, it even it even threatens her absolutely horrible mother. One of the worst mothers I've ever re read in one of these stories. And, you know, she's called away to another town to help out with healing that they need there because they don't have healers as good. Uh, I'm really glazing over it, but I just want to say how much I love Bruna. Uh, she's just going to get like a couple sentences in passing here because she really is not in this story very long. But her banter with Leisha is absolutely wonderful. Uh, it made me think of Valerie from The Princess Bride. You know, I'm not a witch. I'm your wife. That one. But, you know, it made me very sad that I could tell she wasn't going to be, you know, very old. She wasn't going to be with her like the rest of the book series or anything like that. And it actually broke my heart that she passes away kind of, you know, off camera, so to speak, uh, while, while Leisha is on this trip to the other town. But Alicia's other part of the story is something that I know has turned a lot of folks off on this book. Uh, we live in highly politicized times, and I can see why. Uh, that that's how I mean much much of the story is, is for her is talk is, is talking about her virginity. It comes up a lot, a lot, and this book covers you know a decade plus of these characters' lives uh, from very young to you know young adults. And most of Alicia's is, I keep wanting to call her Alicia, I don't know why. Most of Alicia's is dealing with the, the boy she was betrothed to, Garrett, Garrett or Jared, I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. Uh, like I said, I don't listen to audiobooks, so I don't know if these names are right or not. Uh, he's, he's starting rumors about how they slept together with all of, his, all of his dudes and all that. And This is a little different than, I know a lot of people try to put like 20th, 21st century thinking in, in, in you know medieval settings, and it doesn't work that way. Uh, like this, if... This kind of rumor gets out, you know, a, a girl's, she's she's ruined, basically. You know, no one's going to want, want her at this point. So it, it makes sense why she's so devastated by this. And she breaks off the betrothal and he gets all stalkery and is like, if I can't have her, no one will. And it even le le leads to this, this messenger, Merrick, who decides to fight Jared. And you're thinking, Merrick, okay, he's a pretty cool dude. No, he escorts her on her journey to this other town that needs the healers. And, you know, even he tries to force himself on her numerous times. You know, <laughs> and she actually has to, to, to use certain herbal recipes to, you know, make him impotent. So, I mean, I can see why this part of the story bothered people. Uh, it, was a, it, it was a very real problem in this kind of time period. So I don't think just completely ignoring it. 
I, I know people don't want to think like that, but it's realistic for the time. And I'm glad we're not putting 21st century thinking in fantasy books that take place in basically ancient Eastern Europe. It's just not how the world worked back then. So do some of these things, if you're going to be bothered by that, fantasy might not be the genre for you. Uh, but the payoff for this is so huge and so heartbreaking that I actually felt really, really bad for Leisha while reading about it. To put it gingerly, her innocence is stolen from her later in the story when she's attacked on the road by bandits and she's raped by two of them. I mean, it was just devastating. Uh, it made it hard to believe she was going to be able to overcome this. And you have one point where, you know, where. Roger, which I'm kind of skipping ahead here of myself. She had actually met Roger at this point. He's our third and final POV character, but Roger's only, th I mean, Roger has to basically like short of slapping her and be like, we can worry about this later. We need to get to safety first. But Roger, he's uh, he's only three when this story starts. You know, he sees his mother and father killed by demons right in front of him. He even le loses a couple fingers during the event, which, you know, they keep calling him like cripple and stuff. And if you've read First Law, it's like, dude, that's a cripple. Losing two fingers doesn't make you a cripple, you know. But he's he's raised by a bard that was there during the attack, and you know, they basically become like a magical group. Um, <laughs> so while it's the most tragic life up to this point of any three, Rogers is the story that, until the three of them meet, that I care for the least. Um, I mean, I just I summed it up in a couple sentences here. That that that's how much this, his his story really kind of stuck with me. Uh, his adoptive father dies in a drunken rage while they're on the road. And, you know, he goes out on his own playing his fiddle, which he learns seemingly can manipulate demons and keep them from attacking him. So that's an interesting little twist. Uh, when he's injured, you know, he ends up in the care of Leisha and decides to escort her back to her home village when she learns that her father's on his deathbed. There's like a pox in the village and she wants to go and see how many of them she can save. But this is where that attack on the road I mentioned happens. And when they're about to be attacked by demons, they're saved by someone known as the Painted Man or the Warded Man, depending on which edition of the book that you are reading. My copy still says the Painted Man, but since the Warded Man seems to be the official title now, I don't know the, the story between that. I can guess uh, why that title was changed, but I'll stick with calling him the Warded Man the rest of the way since that seems to be... Uh, what is considered the official canon now, even though my iPad version still says the Painted Man all over it. Uh, I, I think it was quite clear that this Warded Man was going to be revealed to be Arlen, uh, but I can see how someone might have missed it and been real surprised when he, when he actually says what his name is. But he has the, the wards all over his body now. I'm still not sure if they're tattoos or if he's just drawing them on there. I'm pretty sure that he's just drawing them on there. But he actually, he actually fights demons by hand and, and kills them and lives a life on the road now. Uh, him and Leisha have an instant connection, and after some convincing, she uh, he agrees to take them to her home village and save, help try to save her father. It all cum culminates in a huge battle with the demons to save her town. Think scouring of the Shire here, and they start to rebuild. The book ends with a transition back to Krasia and Jardir, leading a caravan across the desert with the stolen spear, where they have declared him the Deliverer. You know, and the Deliverer is like the chosen one that's supposed to save them from the demons. Uh, so very little prophecy there, uh, not as much as like a Wheel of Time or something like that. But there is some of that going on, some Chosen One stuff. And I know I've went a little long here. Uh, <laughs> there was so much more in the book that I, that I skipped over, like Reagan and Alyssa. And I mean, there's just so many characters in this that I, that I felt like if I had really, really dived into it, uh, this video would be like 45 minutes long. And I try to keep these around 20 minutes if I can. Uh, but, you know... I'm a sucker for a coming-of-age story, and this has three of them. So let's talk about what I liked and didn't like and what I'm hoping for in the sequel books. You know, I, I really do love this world. I think it's a really, really great idea. And, and, and the idea of something as simple as travel, you know, has to be done in short bursts and strategically, you know, because you don't want to be caught outside, obviously, uh, you know, outside of a warded town or a city after dark. You know, they talk about, like, you know, always you can draw these wards on the ground or something like that. But, you know, a little bit of wind, maybe rain, you're screwed. You know, so um, I also really, really liked how much time passes in this book. I mean, Roger's three when it starts, and he's like 18 when it ends. I'm not sure on that since he seems to lie about his age to Alicia constantly because he's crushing on her. But uh, 
I, I, do, I do like that uh, how much time really goes by in this. It really feels like, without being like super montage it, it feels like a natural progression of time. And splitting that up between the three characters and them all being different ages really was a really cool touch. Also, with, with Arlen, I like that he isn't your typical protagonist that's like, oh, no, why me? Why does this have to happen to me? Uh, but you know, also, he's not perfect in a way. This isn't Gvoth. Gvoth. I can't say his name from Name of the Wind. This guy makes mistakes. You know, he 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 achieves great things, but he has some big time tumbles. I like that in a protagonist. Uh, same with Leisha. You know, she goes from someone who lives in fear of her mother to you know one of the best healers in the land who's able to you know stand up to her mother by the ear. Roger, you know, he had a very very damaging life event, and. At only three, you know, he may not be a fighter or even a lover, you know, but he's got courage. And if that, that, that courage doesn't get him killed, I, you know, he ha- he's got a bright future in this. So uh, it sounds like I'm saying I didn't really like Roger. I did. I did. I just, I didn't care for like the traveling magical group. That was just, eh, whatever. I, I, I've seen it done before. Uh, what I didn't like, I, I guess it would probably be how much time is spent talking about Roger's musical career and his adoptive father. Uh, I know it's supposed to have a big payoff with him being able to chase off demons with his fiddle. But, you know, it was the only parts of the story that dragged for me. The rest of it, man, I could not put it down. It was really one more chapter, one more chapter, one more chapter. And, and also with Leisha, again, I understand the criticisms of her of her non-sex life. And, and, and even though I was crushed with the payoff, you know, the only thing I couldn't find myself believing was two days after something that traumatizing, she's going to decide to have her first act of consensual sex in a mud puddle with a dude who's basically a stranger and comes off as very strange uh, as Arlen does at, at very first. So yeah, I think that felt kind of rushed. That should have been like a book two or three thing. But again, it's hard for me to say when I've read 20% of the story here because there's four books left. Uh, going forward, I, I, I'm do hoping that maybe we get some new POV characters. Uh, I do like all three of the main characters in this and I do want to see more of them. You know, but I'd like to see some more. You know, I think that's what I like about the first Law series so much is that you, Joe Abercrombie usually has about about six POV characters, and I think that really helps uh, flesh out the world and flesh out different points of view. So it isn't all just, "Hey, you're seeing this from my eyes, and this is how it is." You know, you're actually seeing those same POV characters from other POV characters' eyes, and so I'm hoping that that happens. And if these three are going to decide to stick together. I'm sure we're going to get different POV characters because what's the point of getting the POV from three characters who are all in the same location? And this way we don't have to break them up just because. Uh, also, am I to assume that Jardir is the new villain of this story outside of the demons? Uh, lots of questions there. Lots of questions there. Who knows? Maybe we're going to see things from his side of the story. Maybe it's not quite as uh, black and white as we're led to believe. Uh, I'm sure I have more questions, you know, but I actually finished this book a week ago and I might have forgotten a few things. And this video has already ran kind of long, so I'm going to stop it there. But again, I really enjoyed this. I I understand the criticisms, but they didn't bother me as much as everyone else. Uh, Like I said, when you're approaching fantasy, you have to think about it in medieval terms. You can't think about it by today's standards because things weren't like that. And if you can't handle reading that, uh, again, like I said, fantasy might not be the genre for you unless you want to go to the YA fantasy that I just talked about. And that might be a little more uh, sensitive to uh, current issues. Uh, I try to avoid politics on this, but I, I, the, all the reviews I saw, kind of like with Broken Empire, uh, I, I saw the same kind of reviews about, you know, it's sexist and racist and all that stuff. And it's like, when you're dealing with medieval fantasy, that was the norm, you know? And it's just that's just the way you're going to have to learn to get on board with those kind of things or, you know, move on. Uh, I plan on reading book two within the next month or so. Uh, I, I'm, I'm juggling five series right now. Uh, the Taking that break from Wheel of Time, I said, okay, I'm going to read some of these other series I've been putting off instead of tying myself down to one series. So uh, I'm reading The Demon Cycle, Broken Empire, The Red Rising books, uh, the first Law books. I'm doing one of those a month leading up to the release of the new one. And I just started Lightbringer by Brent Weeks. Very good, by the way. Uh, I even threw a Witcher book in there. I just did that review. I'll, I'll link that review at the end of this video. Uh, so I'll be heading back to this universe, you know, sooner than y- you'd think. Because, uh, like I said, I, I get in about four hours of reading time per day, so I'm getting some of these books out of the way really quick. Especially some of these r- lighter reads. I mean, I read this in two days. I read Red Rising in a couple of days. Uh, I'm about three quarters done with Lightbringer right now. So I, I feel like I'm reading now faster than I can get these videos out. And uh, 
might have to be somewhere I'm just like, you know what? I'm just not going to do a review for that one. I might just uh, actually refer you to my Goodreads review or something like that. Uh, but the best way to not miss any of these videos is to help me out by hitting that subscribe button. You know, the channel's growing. We're slowly climbing towards that goal I had of 500 subscribers. That might not seem a lot to, you know, some of you people. Most of these people got like thousands and thousands of subscribers. I just want to get to 500 so I can beat YouTube's shitty algorithm that won't allow my videos to pop up in a basic search. I think I was at like 350-ish last time I checked or whatever. So uh, if you like this video, please subscribe and, and check out the other content in the channel. I do a book review or a Let's Discuss segment every single week. We also do a live show on here just about every week or every other week where we talk about everything relevant that happened in geek pop culture media over that week. So please hit subscribe, share these with your friends, and I will talk to you guys soon.